Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, I'm going to continue covering games from the Third Croatian League. Uh, after I came back from Italy, uh, we still had three rounds of the league to play. Uh, so, so this is round four rounds. Excuse me. Uh, there's uh, 13 rounds in the league, and actually four teams, uh, four worst scoring teams, get to go to a lower league at the end of the season. And the best team at the end of the season gets to advance to the second league. Now we were somewhere in the middle of the table, and and we still had to do well. It was really unclear whether we were going to go back to the fourth league, which we advanced from last season. So we had to do well. And in this uh, in this match, we are facing a team that's on paper stronger than us, but they've been actually scoring worse than us. I was playing board 2, <clears throat> and I was playing a national master, rated 2200. Uh, I, I went pawn to d4, and th this game uh, I haven't analyzed with the engine until half an hour ago. And actually yesterday, uh, during my lesson with my coach, we went over this game. And we didn't find all the correct continuations and didn't come up with all the correct conclusions. I was really uncertain about whether I, okay, I, I don't want to spoil too much, you're going to see the key points, but but it was a tough game. Okay, my opponent went pawn to e6, he wants to play a Dutch setup, which I knew, plays f5, and we get a sort of normal position after e3, knight f6, knight f3. Here he plays g6, which is very strange. Um, you don't really have time for a Leningrad setup. I mean, you could play it. G6 is not a bad move, but it's just way more principled to, to either go B6 straight away, using the fact that white cannot really challenge the E4 square. So just going for E4. And uh, the other sensible way to play is just bishop E7, castles first, and then D6, and, and then maybe B6. It's not likely that white is going to get the bishop on G2 anyway. In fact, that would probably be a losing idea. But my opponent went g6. And now if you remember my game against Abramovich, in which I played the, the exact position with colors reversed, he had problems on c7, he had problems on, on in his case, c2 and, and e3. In this case, there's already some tension in the position and it already seems that, that knight g5 could be an idea, maybe something uh, could put additional pressure onto c7. So g6 just seems very loose. It's not a bad move, but I think unless you are really sure about what to do and unless you know all the patterns, you, you are going to get in trouble. I played bishop e2. Uh, this is a move I want to play anyway. Uh, since I want to play c4 and knight c3, my bishop doesn't really belong on c4. It doesn't belong on d3 either because this pawn chain is really strong. So bishop e2 is firstly a natural square for the bishop. Secondly, in the event of knight h5, which doesn't work for the moment, I would have an additional threat of bishop h5 and, and winning a pawn with check. He went bishop g7, I went c4, d6, knight c3, and he castled. Okay, here I probably don't have to play h3, but I did play it because I don't want to allow any knight h5 ideas. Uh, if knight h5, bishop g5, the queen wants to go to e8 anyway, defending the e6 pawn, and also I don't want my bishop on g5, I want my knight on g5. So h3 seems like a normal, normal prophylactic move, doesn't lose too much time. Here he went knight bd7, which undefends e6, and it's hard to suggest a developing plan for black, when he played e6 and g6, and knight bd7 may just be the best option, but again, it's very scary. Castles, and here he played the move I thought he couldn't play. I honestly had no idea what I would have done with black. Uh, I just... I, the only thing I know is that he should aim to play e5, and maybe he could have prepared that with queen e7 or rook e8. I think queen e7 is the most sensible option here, just... Play, playing a normal move. He always has knight e8 if I attack uh, the c7 pawn. He also has knight f8 uh, to, to overprotect e6 and also to defend c7 with the queen. So either rook e8 or queen e7, maybe rook e8 first, 
and then queen e7 and then knight b4 can be met with knight f8 and then maybe e5 can be pre prepared but after castles he played b6 which i thought was just impossible now in this position i thought there has to be a win here for white there has to be a forced win there are just too many weaknesses so very common patterns uh, in in structures like this which i play with both colors are pressure on e6 pressure on c7 and pressure on the c6 square so the first thing i started thinking about was of course what happens on knight g5 bishop f3 the rook has to move and then how do i exploit c6 so maybe knight b5 knight a7 knight c6 if the rook is on b8 that forks his rook and queen wins the rook so i played knight g5 which uh, requires a forced answer i think with rook e8 and then i played bishop f3 which requires again a forced answer with, with rook to b8 and now my first candidate was knight b5 i almost played it instantly uh, to explain why i didn't play it uh, I would have to dig deep into one of my biggest weaknesses, and that's not being lazy over the board when it comes to calculation, but simply not being able to visualize how good or bad a position is. So in my mind, I, I got this far. Okay, knight b5, he doesn't have a way to protect the pawn. If I get my knight into c6, he loses the queen. If he plays h6, which I thought was forced, then I give up one knight two knights and then a bishop for a queen so that's three pieces for a queen let me just show you what i'm talking about so h6 knight a7 takes knight c6 takes the bishop takes the queen takes takes i thought this position was equal it's not equal it's it's better for white not winning or anything but it's better for white um, i have two pawns and the queen for three pieces so i'm a point of material up which isn't that relevant or isn't as relevant as the fact that uh, the e6 pawn is weak i still have the c6 square if he chooses to to trade off the bishops to regain control over c6 then e6 becomes much weaker for as long as i don't give up c5 and e5 i don't see a good way for his pieces to activate because if a bishop trade does happen then surely at some point i i, I am going to place uh, play f3 maybe not while my f4 pawn is hanging even though that can be defended by the queen but f3 simply restricts these two knights so much that i don't really have a square to suggest for them which means that e6 is a permanent weakness, I get to double my rooks and then eventually just go b4, a4 and, and, and make a passed pawn. Uh, yesterday when I was looking <clears throat> at the game with my coach, we just concluded that this was good uh, for white and why didn't you play it? And I couldn't say why. Because knight b5 was my first candidate. Now, there's an engine line which we didn't see during our analysis. I'm just going to show it to you. The engine actually says this is only slightly better for white. After uh, h6, knight a7, and then not a g5, but bishop a6. Which I never would have come up with. And now after knight c6, the engine plays queen c8, knight e6, rook e6 knight b8 queen b8 and the point is that you you don't have bishop d5 still because the knight is on f6 your c4 pawn is hanging so probably the best move is queen to c2 and the engine thinks this is fine for black uh i mean it should be fine for black it's a couple of pawns for a piece but in any case so so I reached this position and I played knight g5 and bishop f3 pretty quickly. Knight b5, as I said, was my first candidate, but I, I didn't feel comfortable enough with it. Then I started looking at d5, which is a very thematic move in a position like this, just breaking up the pawns. Uh, obviously, the, the, the point of this is to make his bishop even worse and to gain control over the e6 square. And I thought advancing with e5 was impossible, which my coach just proved me wrong in about 10 seconds yesterday so after e5 we, we went through this variation without moving the pieces we went knight e6 okay the queen has to go to e7 bishop h2 is the only natural move and now knight f8 excuse me not queen f8 knight f8 defending c7 and challenging the knight and if i'm forced to take and queen g7 probably not to run into any forks after knight c6 
not that knight c6 could happen, but it's just way more natural not to allow this at all. So just take with the queen. Uh, what do I do? This should be slightly better for black. I mean, all of a sudden the knight is coming to c5. Uh, things are going to be opening up. So, and th the main problem here is that my knight is trapped. If there was no knight on f6, then fine. I could meet h6 with knight e6, rook e6, bishop d5. Get a pawn and, and the rook for two pieces, which, depending on the position, could be good for me. So I chose a move which I thought was really natural. And when I analyzed the game with the engine uh, today, it actually says that bishop c6 is the best move, but not for the reasons I chose it. So bishop c6 for me had two clear purposes. One of them was to give my knight a square. The second one was to establish a full blockade on the light squares, which made sense. And it doesn't risk anything. It just loses the initiative. And, and after h6, which probably has to play, if he doesn't, then I go knight b5. Uh, after h6, I have to go back with knight f3. And now he goes bishop b7. And I played queen a4 instantly. This was my plan. I still want to keep the blockade. He plays queen c8. And now I, I, I messed up. Uh, it's, it's not that I made a big mistake, but after my next decision, I have nothing in the position. So the, the only way to capitalize on my advantage is to continue b4. I need to keep gaining space and, and cramp his position with b5. That, that's the only way to, to get an advantage. And strong players agree with that plan and the engine agrees with that plan. So let's say he takes and, and queen takes and queen to b7. Well, that's fine. I get to take a lot of space. So for example, something like this. Firstly, his rook is misplaced. c6 cannot be played yet because d6 is, ha is hanging. d5 can hardly ever be played because I get the e5 square and I have a simple plan just doing this. And eventually with the control over the a file, I, I should be better. Instead, I played rook ad1. I started fearing variations in which I push my queenside pawns and he, he gets some tempi with knight e4. He played a6 and now I made an even worse decision. So here again, once I've moved my rook, b4 is tactically stronger. Not that it, it matters for, for like an engine evaluation, but for humans, b4 is easier to play now because there's no rook on a1. <clears throat> and I, I'm not afraid of the trade. I should just have played b4. I should also mention that after bishop b7, instead of queen a4, I could have taken on b7 to misplace the rook at least. Because in this position after a6, I decided to take. And once I take here, firstly, I didn't play b4. Secondly, I did not misplace his rook, and the queen is actually perfectly placed on b7. All, this, all of a sudden, my queen is misplaced on a4. Uh, my pieces don't have any good squares. His pieces have much better squares. He has no weaknesses because I have no way to target g6 or, 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 or e6 or c7 or anything. Have to drop back, losing time. And he plays b5. And now white is worse. And this is something you just feel during the game when the, when the, the evaluation of the position shifts. And, and you, you just feel that you're slightly worse now. You're no longer playing for an advantage. You're <clears throat> playing to capitalize on your advantage. You're just trying not to make your position even worse. Okay, so, so this I have to take. So C takes, A takes. And now I played B4, giving up the C4 square. <clears throat> I was really afraid of... Uh, I'll show you what I was afraid of. If I play something like B3... Then here and here. And the idea is very, very simple. One of the knights is going to trade off my a4 knight. The other knight is going to come to c3. And maybe I can do something about that with like something like this. Knight e1, knight... Uh, excuse me. Uh, how do I do it? Oh... There really no simple way to dislodge that knight maybe something like this I'm, okay maybe there's a simpler way i don't want to waste time now but maybe i can challenge the c3 square but it's not going to be easy that's why i didn't play b3 if i don't play b3 or b4 then then he just plays b4 and it's even worse after b4 of course 
there's there's this issue but at least if i can get in a4 i can get some breathing room and equalize so if i get in e4 i should be okay he played rook a8 i played queen b3 uh, knight d5 this is a very good move and i have to take this uh, so takes takes and now he has full control over the center uh, my pieces are bad and he can just prevent a4 uh, I went rook a1, he went knight b6, he can also just go rook a4, rook fc1, and here he gave me a chance, I mean, he didn't have to, he should have played rook a4, and just doubled up and, and kept squeezing me, instead he went knight c4 straight away, there's a fun line which I didn't see myself, this is an engine line, after rook a4 the engine doesn't want to get destroyed on the queen side, it just plays a knight h4 and gives up a piece, now, if, if g5 is played, then the engine actually thinks white is better after knight f5, gf4, and ef4. There's going to be some compensation for the piece, and the engine thinks it's more than enough. For a human of my strength, this is hard to play. I kept being focused on the queen side, and I, I don't think I would have considered this at all my coach actually said well what if instead of rook c1 you just go g4 give up a pawn so he had the correct idea he just didn't come up with the correct move but i played rook fc1 and as i said he gave me a chance with knight c4 and now the position is actually equal because if if i can play a4 i have no problem ba4 rook a4 he played rook e b8 rook c a1 uh, we have to trade rook a8 queen a2 and this is perfect equality now he played c6 bishop g3 king f7 h4 king e6 bishop f4 i don't really have a good way to improve my position except to prevent g5 and get my knight to d3 to free up my queen so that's what i did uh, knight e1 there was actually uh, a way to to get a big advantage with white here which again i i didn't even consider during the game and that was to play h5 so if he plays g5 i just sack a piece and after this i go queen c2 this is a fun line which again i think for a human of my strength it's very hard to see if he takes on c on b4 he loses the bishop uh, but yeah i played the normal move knight e1 king e6 knight d3 and now the position is equal uh, we ended up drawing fairly quickly uh, i tried to come into h5 with my queen Eventually he allowed it, but forced the queen trade. And I played g4, trading everything off. And this is just this is just a draw. It, it, it was a very simple position after after the rooks got traded off. Except for h5, that piece sacrifice, there wasn't really a chance for either side. This is how the game ended. c5, bc takes, takes takes king g3 he gave up his bishop this is the only chance to, to try and win but unless i blunder horribly he isn't going to win my knight is just controlling everything and the game ended king e2 knight d4 king e3 knight f3 king e2 knight d4 and so on we agreed to a draw with a threefold repetition but coming back to the critical moment in the game <clears throat> this one after rook b8 so when the game ended uh, mate asked me well how did the game go and i said i i could have i think i could have won won the game out of the opening i'm pretty sure i could have uh, because i just had this feeling that i was again not lazy to calculate but i just couldn't assess the position correctly in the end i did i ended up playing the best move but by, by complete mistake uh and i didn't follow it up so it in my game it didn't didn't turn up turn out being the best move because i just so bishop c6 is the lazy move to play give your knight a square blockade on the light squares you don't have to calculate it's just i had an hour and 20 minutes on the clock i could have spent an hour on knight b5 and probably would have won the game because even though it's not a winning position it should be much easier for white to play and also after knight b5 he would have to invest a lot of time so even though I drew, I'm extremely unhappy with this game, and I was mad at myself uh, after it. So yeah, hopefully you can learn something uh, from this game, not necessarily about chess, but about thinking while playing a game. 
yeah, okay, don't, don't make the same mistakes I did. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.